The Battle of Finchhafen was part of the Huon Peninsula campaign in New Guinea during World War II and was fought between Australian and Japanese forces. The fighting took place between 22 September and 24 October 1943 following the landing at Scarlet Beach, which was followed by a two-pronged advance on Finchhafen as the Australian 20th Infantry Brigade advanced on the town from the north, while the 22nd Infantry Battalion drove from the south, having advanced from the landing beaches east of Ley. After the capture of Finchhafen, the Japanese forces in the area withdrew towards Sattelberg where they sought to hold the Australians before launching a counter-offensive, which subsequently threatened the landing beach. This attack was repelled by American and Australian forces, with heavy casualties being inflicted on the Japanese. In the aftermath, the Australians went on the offensive, capturing Sattelberg, and then advancing towards the Wario Plateau. Chapter 1 Background Finchhafen had been occupied by the Imperial Japanese Army on 10 March 1942 as part of strategic moves to provide protection to Ley, which they had established as an important air base. Throughout early 1943, the Allies had begun offensive operations in the Salamua area of New Guinea and following the landing at Nadzab and capture of Ley in early September 1943. The Allies attempted to exploit their success with an advance to Finchhafen to begin the Huon Peninsula campaign. The operation to capture Finchhafen was important to capture the western Cape of the Vicious Strait for the construction of airfields and naval facilities for the upcoming New Britain campaign as part of Operation Cartwheel. The responsibility for securing the Huon Peninsula was assigned to Major General George Wooten's Australian 9th Division. On the 22nd of September, the Australian 20th Infantry Brigade, under the command of Brigadier Victor Windia, supported by artillery from the 2 12th Field Regiment, as well as a field company of engineers and a field ambulance, had landed at Scarlet Beach, about 10 kilometres north of Finchhafen, and proceeded to establish a beachhead there. At the same time, the 22nd Infantry Battalion, an Australian militia unit that had landed east of Ley in early September to relieve the troops holding the beachhead, began pursuing the Japanese that were withdrawing to the east, marching from Hopoi Mission Station towards Finchhafen, with a view to placing pressure on the Japanese southern flank. The Japanese had expected an Allied assault on the Finchhafen region, from around late July 1943. Having appreciated its significance in relation to the Vichiers and Dampier Straits, the Japanese 18th Army commander, Lieutenant General Hatazo Adachi, had begun moving forces into the region. The majority of these were drawn from the 20th Division, which dispatched a force of about 2,800 men from Madang in August. These forces consisted of the 80th Infantry Regiment, 1 Battalion of the 26th Field Artillery Regiment, and the 7th Naval Base Force. In addition, following the fall of Ley, elements of the 41st Division, primarily the 238th Infantry Regiment, and the 51st Division's 102nd Infantry Regiment, were also moved to the area, and were placed under the command of Major General Azo Yamada, commander of the 1st Shipping Group. The total number of Japanese in the area was around 4,000 to 5,000, although Allied intelligence estimated a strength of between 350 and 2,100. Yamada's forces were spread out in a series of outposts that were orientated around a main defensive position established at Sattelberg, an abandoned Lutheran mission situated atop a 975 metre mountain that dominated the terrain about 12 kilometres northwest of Finchhafen. The Japanese forces lacked transportation and the road network had not been fully developed. They were low on ammunition for all calibers of weapons, especially artillery, and the majority of stores had to be carried by combat troops, as local carriers had ceased working for the Japanese in response to Allied propaganda. Following the landing at Scarlet Beach, Yamada was ordered to launch an attack on the Australian forces in order to delay them so that further reinforcements could arrive from the 20th Division. Chapter 2 Battle Chapter 2 Section 1 Australian Drive on Finchhafen. After the landing, the Australians began establishing a beachhead several kilometres deep, during which significant actions were fought around Siki Cove and Katika. Late in the day, a large Japanese air raid struck the Allied fleet offshore, 
but this was eventually defeated by a strong U.S. fighter umbrella that was forewarned by Allied picket ships. The following day, the 23rd of September, the 20th Brigade's drive on Finchhafen began, with two battalions commencing the advance south, the 2 13ths and 2 th 15 th supported by the 2 12ths Field Regiment as well as engineers from the 2 thirds Field Company, while the 2 17ths was split up, with two companies advancing as part of the brigade's reserve, while another remained to secure the beachhead from a Japanese attack and push it further to the north, and the 4th pushed towards Sattelberg. The 2 thirds Pioneer Battalion remained in the beachhead, working to improve roads, while the 2 eighths Field Ambulance set up a main dressing station, which would receive casualties as they were evacuated rearwards from the advanced, dressing station that was following the battalions advancing south. In addition to having to split their forces, the Australians also suffered from supply difficulties during the advance. The terrain over the southerly approaches was quite difficult being primarily dense jungle with numerous water crossings and rugged features. To traverse the ground, the Australians had only limited vehicles, with each infantry battalion possessing four jeeps with trailers for resupply, while the engineers and artillery had several trucks and tractors. The local population, which might have been employed to carry stores, had abandoned the Japanese due to Allied propaganda, and their services were also unavailable to the Allies at the initial stages of the campaign. As a result, a large amount of stores had to be carried by combat soldiers, who were diverted to the task. Nevertheless, the Australian advance succeeded in capturing the Heldspark plantation, and the nearby airfield. It continued until the Australians came up against strong resistance around the Bummy River. There are a force of around 300 Japanese sailors and marines from the 85th Naval Garrison, reinforced by elements of the 238th Infantry Regiment, established themselves in a blocking position. Although they were under orders to conform to the overall Japanese plan of delaying the Australians and then withdrawing towards Sattelberg to carry out a containment operation, the commander of the naval troops resolved to hold the position, and they subsequently held up the Australian advance on 26 September, until they were overcome through an attack on their flanks by the 215th Infantry Battalion. In response to concerns about the large number of Japanese forces in the area, which had proven to be in larger numbers than Allied intelligence had estimated, Windia requested reinforcements. These were initially refused as U.S. naval commanders balked at the idea of transporting another brigade to Finchhafen due to the risks involved and potential naval losses that might be incurred. In addition, the Allied higher headquarters under General Douglas MacArthur was operating under the mistaken belief that the Japanese defending the area were only very small in number, when in actuality the two forces were roughly equal in size, with the Allied strength after the landing being around 5,300. After much discussion amongst Australian and US commands on 29-30 September the 2nd-43 RD Infantry Battalion arrived to relieve the 2 17ths. The South Australians from the 2 43rds were subsequently tasked with defending the beachhead and the surrounding areas including the Hellspark area, and were ordered to prepare for further actions around Sissy and Sattelberg. Heavy rain fell around this time, and the Australian Brigade commander was compelled to use combat troops to carry stores forward from the landing zone to the forward areas as motor transport was unable to transit the primitive track system. Due to concerns about their western flank, the 2 17ths extended the Australian perimeter towards Jiveneng, establishing a company there, but it subsequently came under attack on the Sattelberg Road and west of Katika on 25 and 26 September from the Japanese 80th Infantry Regiment, which was trying to break through to the Heldspark Plantation on the coast. Over the course of several days, the company from the 2 17ths around Jiveneng held off six Japanese attacks until relieved by the 2 43rds Infantry Battalion on 30 September. Meanwhile, concerned about their rear, Due to the presence of a large number of Japanese troops around Sattelberg, the Australians pushed cautiously to Kakakog, which saw heavy fighting at the end of the month, resulting in around 100 Japanese casualties as the Australians called in artillery fire and air attacks to soften up the Japanese defences prior to an attack by the 213th Infantry Battalion, supported by Vickers machine guns from the 215ths. From the south, 
the 22nd Infantry Battalion advanced north against limited opposition. On the 1st of October, they crossed the Mape River adjacent to Langmak Bay, while the forward troops from the 20th Infantry Brigade overwhelmed a Japanese force around Kakakok, supported by artillery and air power, killing between 80 and 100 defenders. Following this, the Japanese began withdrawing from Finchhafen and the next day, the 20th Infantry Brigade reached their objective, entering Finchhafen in the afternoon after overcoming limited resistance. The two forces married up the following day as troops from the 217th contacted the 22nd. This ended the first phase of the battle. During operations to capture Finchhafen, the Australians lost 73 killed, 285 wounded. Sickness also resulted in a further 391 evacuations. Japanese casualties were reported as heavy, but Allied intelligence assessed that a large number of Japanese forces remained at large and had withdrawn west away from the coast in preparation for further fighting. In the same time, U.S. forces from the 532nd Engineer Boat and Shore Regiment lost 8 killed and about 42 wounded, mainly during the landing operations around Scarlet Beach. Chapter 2 Section 2 Japanese Counterattack Following the capture of Finchhafen, the main part of the Australian 20th Infantry Brigade returned to Scarlet Beach, due to intelligence that the Japanese were about to attack. The 213th and 22nd Infantry Battalions were left around Finchhafen, while the 215th and 2th-17th Infantry Battalions were reorientated to defend the approaches to Scarlet Beach. Around Jiveneng, 5 km east of Sattelberg, the 243rds had taken up a blocking position and in the early days of October fought a Japanese attack by a battalion from the 80th Infantry Regiment along the coast road to a halt. In an effort to shore up their western flank, the Australian 217th Infantry Battalion pressed towards Kamawa, which was met with a fierce response from the Japanese on 5 October when their line of communication from the west was threatened. The battalion continued to fight around Jiveneng, and on 10 October they secured a piece of high ground called the Knoll by the Australians, who subsequently defeated 12 attacks to take it back. On the 11th of October October, as it became apparent to the Allies that Japanese were preparing for a major assault, Wharton and his headquarters landed at Finchhafen, along with the remainder of Brigadier Bernard Evans' 24th Infantry Brigade. That day, the bulk of the Japanese 20th Division, under Shigeru Katagiri, arrived in the area, as the size of the Japanese force facing the Australians increased to 12,000, nevertheless, Katagiri decided to hold off on launching his counter-attack until stores and ammunition could be stockpiled in sufficient quantities. Meanwhile, the Australian 24th Infantry Brigade was subsequently given responsibility for defence in depth around the Heldspark Plantation and Aunt Point, while the 20th Infantry Brigade defended around the Sattelberg Road and the Mape River, with the 22nd Infantry Battalion on their southern flank around Draga Harbour. As troops from the 20th Infantry Brigade attempted to push towards Sattelberg, the 24th began patrol actions towards Bonga. During one of these patrols, the Allies gained a significant intelligence boon when they discovered a Japanese briefcase containing an operational order detailing plans for a coming counterattack. In addition, the Allies intercepted several Japanese radio transmissions and deduced their intentions based upon reports of troop and ship movements. This allowed the Australians to switch to a defensive strategy instead of continuing to push on towards Sattelberg. The main Japanese counterattack began on the 16th of October, signalled by a large bonfire on Sattelberg. The attack was conceptualized as a three-pronged action involving a diversionary attack by elements of the 79th Infantry Regiment to the north from Bonga, a company-level attack on Scarlet Beach from the sea by elements of the 79th with the Sugino Craft Raiding Unit, and a drive from Sattelberg by the remainder of the 79th and 80th Infantry Regiments orientated upon two lines of advance, one towards Scarlet Beach, conforming with the Song River, and the other striking towards Hellspark advancing astride the Sattelberg Road. If successful, it was intended that following a regrouping, the two infantry regiments would then clear Finchhafen and Langmak Bay, but Japanese plans went awry from the beginning. The northern diversion was easily overcome, 
and failed to confuse the Australians into committing their reserves, while the central drive was launched too early, in fact the day before the assault was scheduled to begin, consequently undermining Japanese attempts to achieve sufficient weight of forces to overcome the defenders. The seaborne landing also suffered a significant setback when more than half of the seven landing craft were destroyed by PT-128 and PT-194 on the night of 8-9 October while on their way to the landing beach. They subsequently suffered heavy casualties during the assault around the beach, with US and Australian troops there mounting a stubborn defence. The beach was guarded by a Bofors 40mm gun of the 10th Light Anti-Aircraft Battery, two-pounder anti-tank guns and machine guns of the 228s, and two 37mm guns and 2.50 caliber machine guns manned by the US 532nd Engineer Boat and Shore Regiment. One of the .50 caliber machine guns, manned by Private Nathan Van Noy, assisted by Corporal Stephen Popper, engaged a group of Japanese led by a bugler and two men with flame throwers. A Japanese hand grenade landed in their weapon pit, shattering one of Van Noy's legs and wounding Popper, but they continued to fire. Another Japanese grenade silenced them. Van Noy was subsequently awarded the Medal of Honor. The Australians managed to hold key terrain around Jai Veneng and Katika from where the Allies employed their direct and indirect fire support to inflict heavy casualties. Nevertheless, the Japanese achieved a degree of tactical success, albeit briefly. On the 18th of October, a party of Japanese broke through to Siki Cove, where Australian anti-aircraft gunners and artillerymen were forced to fire over open sights and fight back with small arms, after coming under fire from troops that had gotten under the guns. That night, the Japanese cut the 217th Infantry Battalion's supply route, establishing a roadblock astride the Jai Veneng Sattelberg Road, and cutting off the Australians defending Jai Veneng. The 217ths and a number of other Australian units, such as most of the 2 thirds Pioneer Battalion, as well as part of the 228ths, became isolated behind Japanese lines. In order to keep them supplied, emergency airdrops of ammunition were flown in by pilots of No. 4 Squadron RAF. Presented with the ambiguity of the situation, the commander of the two-thirds Pioneer Battalion withdrew one of his outposts, while Brigadier Bernard Evans, commander of the 24th Infantry Brigade, also contracted his position around the beachhead, and in doing so subsequently granted the Japanese the prime position of Katika. The Australian divisional commander, Wooten, was enraged by the decision and subsequently lambasted his commander via radio. In response, the 213th Infantry Battalion detached two companies from rear area security and sent them north, while the 228th Infantry Battalion launched a counterattack against the Japanese around Katika, which, supported by artillery, successfully regained the position. Nevertheless, largely the fighting went in favor of the Allies, and finally the Japanese assault ground to a halt. Despite forcing a contraction of the Australian forces defending the beachhead, on 21 October the Japanese withdrew from Siki Cove, although the fighting around Katika continued for four more days as the Japanese attempted to retake it. Fierce resistance from the 228ths halted them and eventually the attack was called off on 24 October, with the Japanese having suffered heavily due to tactical deficiencies, poor coordination and operational security, and a lack of artillery. Meanwhile, the Allied response was hampered by poor working relationships at some of the highest levels between Australian and US commanders, particularly between I Corps Commander Lt. Gen. Edmund Herring and the 7th Amphibious Force Commander Rear Admiral Daniel E. Barbie, the lack of a unified command structure, overcautiousness amongst naval staff, and a poor appreciation of overall Japanese strength and intentions by the highest level of the Allied command who failed to send reinforcements until it was almost too late. Casualties during the attack amounted to at least 679 Japanese killed with another 821 estimated as wounded, while the Australians lost 49 killed and 179 wounded. Chapter 3, Aftermath Following the conclusion of the fighting around Finchhafen, and the defeat of the Japanese counterattack, the Allies began preparing for a concerted assault on the Japanese main defensive position around Sattelberg. 
In the wake of the Japanese counterattack, the members of the Australian and American staff began working more closely together and reinforcements were quickly approved in the form of the 26th Infantry Brigade, under the command of Brigadier David Whitehead, as well as a squadron of Matilda tanks from the 1st Tank Battalion, whose presence the Australians sought to keep secret for as long as possible, which were landed at Langmack Bay. Supplies were landed by U.S. troops from the 532nd Engineer Boat and Shore Regiment, and then brought up and cached around Jiveneng and Kamawa, but heavy rain hampered the Australian efforts until mid-November. The Australians subsequently were able to reduce and then secure the Japanese stronghold around Sattelberg against determined resistance following a hard slog through dense jungle, working in concert with the Matilda tanks. Elsewhere, further actions were planned, with the 7th Division preparing to advance through the Markham and Ramo valleys as part of the inland advance towards Shaggy Ridge and then the north coast, in order to cut off the Japanese withdrawal route from the Huon Peninsula. This drive would ultimately be unsuccessful in preventing the bulk of the Japanese forces on the Huon Peninsula from escaping. At the same time, once Sattelberg was secured, a simultaneous drive was undertaken to clear the Wario Plateau, which provided good observation towards Scarlet Beach as well as serving as a junction for Japanese lines of communication south. Once Wario was secure, the Allies advanced along the coast, towards Seo, while US forces landed at Sedor to follow up the withdrawing Japanese. Nevertheless, the US and Australian forces would come up against the same forces throughout the remainder of the war around Madang and Itapi Wiwak. Finchhafen was subsequently developed into one of the largest bases in the Southwest Pacific area, according to Garth Pratton. Throughout 1944, the base saw considerable development with the establishment of a staging camp that had a divisional capacity, a wharf, ramps for tank landing ships, LSDs, ramps, and piers. In addition, Several airfields were established capable of hosting both fighter and bomber aircraft, as well as several fuel dumps. From Finchhafen, the Allies were able to project air power towards the main Japanese base at Rabaul, and seal off the Vichyas and Dampier Straits. In addition, the base became an important logistics hub, playing an important role in supplying the American war machine as it advanced through the Philippines in 1944-1945. In 1961, the Battle on a Finchhafen was awarded to the Australian Army units that had been involved in the capture of Finchhafen. Covering the period the 22nd of September to the 8th of December 1943, it includes the capture of Scarlet Beach, the defense of Scarlet Beach, and the fighting for Sattelberg, although separate battle honours were also awarded for these actions.